Ashes of Creation dropped the January livestream this past weekend and it came out with a bane. If you prefer the much quicker 60 second recaps that I do, be sure to check them out on the channel in the YouTube short section because they're over there now. But this livestream, as you know, was supposed to kick off the year of 2023 in a huge way. And it really did just not in the way that we all expected. A solid 40 minutes of this stream was spent showcasing the tank and its abilities, and a lot of people didn't like what they saw for kind of good reason. It was very rushed together. The devs didn't really do a good job showing off the new abilities or talking about the tank in general or the class synergy or anything. They just kind of showed off a few abilities and ran through these mobs, got to this eight player area when there was only four of them, kept dying, ended up cheating to kill bosses, just to get the point across of the video. And people didn't like this so much so that Steven actually went back and redid it and gave the showcase a much better look at the tank. And although there's still room for improvement as we progress through Alpha 2, it's definitely pretty cool to see Intrepid respond to the feedback that quickly and get a whole new video out of there. And it's definitely something that people are talking about. It's Tuesday now and people are still talking about that tank showcase posting on the forums and Reddit and Discord and all of that stuff and although it didn't really put a positive light on the whole stream it is really putting ashes of creation back in the spotlight after a low hype december stream within the tank reveal though was something that i didn't dive too much into in the breakdown and that was our first look at the updated ui with the quest log although this is not much this quest log is filled with 16 quests and it has a max of 30 quests at a time and you can track up to nine quests but the big thing about this for me is seeing active quests in the game is exciting because it really gives you a sign that the world is starting to come together. Because in order for quests to be built, it means NPCs and points of interest also need to be implemented, giving us a small sign that the world is getting pieced together and all of those aspects of MMOs are finally going to start showing up. Obviously, you only see that there's 16 quests in this log and we only see them do one quest throughout the entire stream, but I'd like to hope that these 16 quests are actual quests and not just placeholders but i guess we'll have to wait down the road to find out more i'm hoping as we get further into this year we start to see these worlds really come together with npcs popping up and questing areas and points of interest and all of those things that you would expect in an mmo coming together but we're getting out of that because the tank showcase wasn't the only part of this stream and i've already put a lot of time into it the most interesting thing to come out of the entire january stream outside of the tank showcase though i think is the fact that we learned that there is already already more than 100,000 accounts signed up for Alpha 2 access. I really don't know what I thought there was going to be, but I didn't think there was going to be this many players, which is a huge feat for Intrepid. I believe Maggie said they expected to have 30,000 roughly, so they've already blown that out of the water. And Steven even said in Discord after that he expects this number to be much higher when they finally announce a date and start showcasing trailers for Alpha 2, which he isn't really wrong. There will be a whole bunch of new people with their eyes on the game come Alpha 2, with a lot of big streamers playing it, drawing in a new crowd of signups, but the number of those people who stick it through I bet will be minimal, because alphas are for testing and when people jump in and play buggy mess they will complain about it and move on just like the typical internet does. And the only ones who are going to stick around are those ones who really want to test the game and help improve Ashes of Creation so it can have the best launch it possibly can. The big comment spotlight was also pretty interesting, asking about cinematic representation in the game, don't expect any massive Blizzard or Old Republic level cinematics to showcase the world of Vera come launch. Those trailers cost a lot of money to make and Intrepid is in fact an independent studio. If Ashes of Creation is a huge success though, I would love to see these come down the road, but Steven did say we can expect to have in-game cinematics to represent the story of Ashes of Creation along with what they're calling fragments within the world to be discovered that when collected can show you pieces to story arcs and past events that happened in the world and you can collect all of these fragments to put together the whole picture. There will also be your generic gameplay trailers and things like that coming down the road and through launch that will really get you hyped for the game as well. Steven's Ashes of Creation merch collection also seems to be growing behind him as you see these almost Funko Pop looking things in the background. I don't think they're actual Funko Pops although that would be really cool to see Funko Ashes of Creation things but it's really nice to see more merch appearing every month that goes by and it gives me hope that the Ashes of Creation merch store will open up at some point in the near future. On the art side of things, we got a bunch of Cyclops weapons, the spear, the mace, 
the bow, and the staff to be more specific. The Cyclops are world bosses that roam the Riverlands and there are a variety of different types to them. We should even be seeing a fight play out in the next month or two that is said to scale multiple heights and be a very unique boss fight. I imagine this is going to be the first fight we see that has actual raid boss mechanics to it and not just a hack and slash of an NPC fight. I would honestly be really disappointed if it was just a hack and slash and I don't want to see cheats this time Steven. I want to see you get a full group together and take this thing down. We also have this Carvin shield, which Margaret and Steven used to tease what is to come. I've been saying for a while that I believe we're going to get a run through the Tower of Carvin at some point. It's something they have been teasing for a long time now, and we even know where it's located thanks to the Riverland minimap in the tank showcase. We also saw this greatsword and mace model, which was shown off in the tank gameplay as well, as Steven went through a few weapons throughout the video. We then see five new hairstyles for the Vec orcs, and although I'm still waiting for that Tolnar or the updated Dunir reveal, these guys are also looking pretty cool. I am willing to bet that we're going to see a lot of the character customization come together this year as we move towards Alpha 2, and if we get Alpha 2 this year, then we definitely will get some more customization because, like, you gotta make your characters, and we know the character customization is going to be in Alpha 2. We then have the Najash Snake People. These guys, I believe, live in the desert biome and look pretty interesting. They kind of remind me of of Naga from World of Warcraft. This unfinished model though looks like he has some sort of corruption or something coming out of his back as well which is pretty cool. And then to wrap up the art section we have two mounts and one pet. The two mounts being the Risen Guardian which is this undead reindeer Steven teased around Christmas time and then the Boulderstone Bulldog which was a cosmetic skin. And for the pet we have the Oak Stout which is this weird squirrel fox fairy looking thing. I don't really know what to call it. So really nothing too standout-ish here on the art side. Just some more models and and weapons and things like that. No new races, no new environments or biomes or concept art, but still some pretty cool things. The Q&A talked about renaming the tank class as this is something that there has apparently been a lot of talk about within studio as well as within the community to give it a bit more of a high fantasy name for the role players. Tank really is a role within the party and not a class name normally. It's not like you're calling the cleric healer or every other class damage. So tank I can understand why people want it renamed. Steven isn't opposed to this idea, but they have nothing planned in the immediate future. We also learned that you will not be able to hire NPCs for your ships, and we learned that raid bosses will be aware of the number of combatants within a raider dungeon, which in turn will make them stronger and use different skill sets, such as more AoEs, for a larger amount of players. We knew that dungeons would learn from your previous encounters, but with them being open world and hearing how they will adapt is kind of cool and should make for some pretty interesting PvP and PvE situations. The last interesting thing to come out of the Q&A is how they're going to make the tank viable in PvP. Steven goes on to talk about how they have some ideas to make abilities such as threat and taunts useful within PvP, as they don't want classes to have skills that are only useful in one environment. Ashes of Creation has a big focus around PvP, so you don't really want people who choose the tank role to be excluded from that because it's not fun or not very powerful compared to the other classes. What is your favorite part of the January livestream? Drop it comment down below and if you're new to ashes and have yet to create an account feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums buy some cosmetics or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of era otherwise be sure to click that subscribe button hit that thumbs up turn on the bell for notifications and stay tuned for a lot more to come